Welcome to the Perspectives on Healthcare podcast, where members of the medical community from different roles, venues, and locations share their unique perspectives on quality healthcare, its future, and how to improve it. Now, from the Your Keynote Speaker Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, here is your host, Rob Oliver. Thank you, and I appreciate you being here to hear another perspective on healthcare. Today's perspective comes from Lauren Duroy. She is a nurse practitioner. She is from Oklahoma, practices family medicine, and is a member of the millennial generation. Lauren, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's my pleasure. So let's start right from the beginning. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your role in healthcare, please. Sure. So I am a family nurse practitioner. I've been in practice for a little bit over five years now. Before that, I was an ICU nurse for four years. I have a son who's almost five, one on the way, and I'm married. Uh, We live in Oklahoma, like you said, and we've been here in in rural Oklahoma for um, for the entire the entirety of my uh, profession as a nurse practitioner. Okay. So just for clarification purposes, there are Norman, Oklahoma people and Stillwater, Oklahoma people. Um, which side of the line do you fall on? Boomer sooner. <laughs> just I, for people in Oklahoma, that's important. Um, it uh, is. Yeah. Okay. So um, you're just for my own understanding, your, your ICU experience is also in, in rural medicine. That was actually in Norman. Okay. So that was, yeah, that was, uh, I did do some during our first wave of the COVID pandemic. I had, I had taken a, a, a had to take a few shifts in the ICU in Duncan, which is a bigger town, but it's still smaller. So I have some experience in both, but ICU, most of my experience in ICU was, was up in Norman, the actual town. Okay. Can you talk to me a little bit about the difference between practicing um, in a, with a rural population or in a rural setting, as opposed to practicing in that more urban setting? Sure. There's a lot of differences. Um, I didn't practice family in, in the city. So comparing those two are a little bit different other than I had rotations and stuff there, but I feel the, the biggest thing, the thing that most people notice right off the bat is that people tend to want to be slower. They want to be more connected they want to feel like they are actually present and not just a fleeting moment in your office. And that's probably the biggest thing that I see, especially if, if I have a student or someone who comes in and that seems strange to them at first. And it's almost, it's almost like we're too close, like too close to the patients and then they get to, to love it, you know, but it's, that's probably the the biggest difference. There's there's a lot of cultural difference too, though, between perceived of what is healthy versus what is normal when it comes to diet or routines. Those type of things change quite a bit too. But so you're you're experiencing really that's interesting to me to the cultural difference that uh, mm-hmm. you know the the urban versus the rural and um, you know work, food, the whole thing, it's different in both environments. Wonderful. Um, What does quality healthcare mean to you? Quality healthcare to me means that I am providing to the patient what it is that they feel is necessary in their life and that I am honoring that first and foremost. I always tell my patients, especially if I have a new patient, I always tell them that my job is to be kind of like an information broker for you. I'm going to give you the information I know. I'm going to give you what I know is best practice, what is best evidence, and I'm going to allow you to be able to decide what is best for you in in your time and your life. Many people have different values than a lot of healthcare professionals do. And I think that is especially true, honestly, in in the rural community. And I find that that's 
the biggest thing that people feel more comfortable with on me and that I feel that they are given that, that quality information, uh, that quality healthcare, because it's, it's different from one person to another. One physician might say that, you know, quality is making sure that all of their numbers are within a normal range and that the A1C is, is good and optimal and that they're on the exact amount of dose that's prescribed or that is recommended. And to the patient, that may not be the case. To them, the risks may outweigh the benefit, even though we don't understand that from a medical perspective. Or it, it might be that, you know, quality to them is, is more of, I don't necessarily want to dig in deeper. I don't want to prevent more things. I don't want to do a whole bunch of inter- or interventions. I want to live my life peacefully. And as long as I'm playing that part for them, then I think that that's what, what quality is. It's so very interesting to your definition of quality, just so I'm understanding this right, is it depends completely on the patient, not necessarily on the practitioner. So many, so many times a practitioner will say, just as you mentioned, um, my quality healthcare is to have patients who are doing this or are in, you know, are in this range or whatever it is. Uh, have you always had that perspective or is that something you learned? Is it something you learned during training or where did that perspective come from? It's a really good question. I don't know that I've, I haven't reflected on that in a while. Um, I think that I've always felt that way though. I'm, <clears throat> pardon me, sometimes almost a default I can see both sides of almost every perspective and sometimes you can start arguing yourself back and forth whenever you can do that. But I've always been able to see the, I think maybe it started in the ICU to be honest with you in that I would have a patient who would not want anything further done to them. They were ready to, you know, to be with their maker and they were ready to, to, to end their life here and ready for things to go more naturally. And maybe the family member wouldn't, or not usually a healthcare provider, but m- most often a family member wouldn't want that. And just seeing that there's quality and value in both and having seen somebody extend that out too far and do too much intervention, it's, it causes more pain than it does help. Maybe some of it came from from my background in school and nursing, in that we do have more of a of a holistic perspective, and we do look into different cultures. And I remember learning, especially in some Asian cultures, they do. And it's this is more traditional. If somebody has um, a prognosis that is not good, meaning that they are going to you know, they, they have a, a poor prognosis with, you know, uh, they may pass a cancer or something like that in, in the next few months or years. They don't even want the patient to know because they, they believe so much in the mind-body connection that if they know that, if the, you know, the family member may know, but you won't tell the patient. And if they know that, then it's going to, it's going to make their situation worse and or it's going to expedite their death because they're focusing on it so much. And that's very contrast to our culture or typical culture. So just understanding those different perspectives and knowing that my way is not necessarily the right way. Yeah. Okay. Mind blown because here's, <laughs> here's, what, here's what I'm thinking. And that is there are times when people have a terminal diagnosis and it's almost as if they, they resign themselves to the fact that they are going to pass and they, yeah they live their lives, they live the rest of their lives as though they are already, uh, already gone, which is a a real difficult thing. And the flip side of that is to, uh, to cherish what you have and to live, live the days that you have to the fullest that you can. So Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you've, you've already done this a little bit, but can you give me a, an example of quality healthcare? An example of that. Um, I would say that in 
then <laughs> I'm debating on a, a couple of differences. We were kind of talking about the ICU. We we're talking about family care. So some family care, maybe I'll stay with that. So some family care now. Um, I would say that I have, well, I have, I have one patient in particular and he comes, you know, he came to me and he said, you know, I was going, I'm, I'm actually a very thorough, thorough individual, even though it seems that maybe my description originally, a lot of other providers say, oh, she's, you know, she does things halfway or something. And I'm, I'm not actually, I'm myself, I'm a very thorough person. That's how I want my healthcare personally, but I know it's not everybody. And I, you know, I was going real deep with my patients and explain all the labs and what this means and that means. And, you know, he said, you know, just go ahead and go ahead and stop because I, I really, I'm, I've lived a really great life and I understand that my cholesterol is bad and I understand that the medication might be better for me. And I understand that you're going to prolong, you know, my life, but honestly, I, I, I want less visits here and I'm really just kind of here for a just in case type of scenario. And, you know, I say, that's, that's totally fine. I understand that. And, and I'll, I'll honor that. And I always, especially in healthcare, you still have to, to cover yourself. And I always document that patient is aware of, of his or her risks. And that I did you know, recommend based upon evidence practice, evidence-based practice that they should be on this medication, but they politely declined. And I'll just, I'll document it, of course, sure. because I, I have to do that. And I tell them in case they see, see the chart or something that, you know, I'll just document that. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And to me, I, I feel the patient feels honored. And as long as the patient feels honored and they are aware and I've educated them and I'm, 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 I know that they're clear on, on what it is I'm telling them, then that, that would be a form to me of, of quality healthcare. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, what do you wish people understood about your role in healthcare? And you can take this either from a nurse practitioner perspective or from a rural a uh, practitioner perspective or from whatever perspective you so choose? <laughs> a lot. Every time you said something, I thought something different. I thought something different. Um, there are several different things. I think from a, from a nurse practitioner, I will go ahead and I'll go out on a limb here and say that I, I, I do wish that more people understood that not all of us are trained and not all of us practice at a mid-level and oh, what does that mean so at mid-level is you're a physician extender and that you have an md or a do that you work with very often and you maybe give an hmp to them or you uh, sorry a history and physical right. <laughs> and you will let them know the information you might make a few decisions on the treatment plan but most of the treatment plan is being handed off to the physician and or the physician is reviewing each one of those and making sure that it's in line with their practice. Uh, not all <clears throat> nurse practitioners are trained that way. In my, in my program, we were, we were trained to practice independently in, in that we were given the information that we needed to be able to do that confidently. Yeah, and in my practice, I do have, because of the state of Oklahoma, I have to have a collaborating physician on paper, but they have not ever been in office while I've been practicing, and they are a great individual, and there's no, you know, there's no hardship or anything there by any means, and I greatly respect physicians and MDs, DOs, but just that we can practice to a full scope of family practice, and many of us do. Okay. So uh, what I'm hearing you say is, because uh, when you started off with not all of us are trained, mm -hmm. I thought there's, there's a lack of training in some area, but what you're saying, it's actually the other way around that you are trained so well that you can practice independently and, and not need to be uh, within, you know, housed within another, uh, or, um, you know, either a DO or MD's office um, that you've got the independent level. Uh, that you're able to provide your patients with that level of care. Wonderful. What excites you about the future of healthcare? What excites me is that more of the power is being given back to the patient, that we are seeing more of a responsiveness between, between the patient taking the initiative in their healthcare 
and that they are viewed more as the individual in, in kind of charge of their health care. I, I find it funny and I almost, I don't like the, like I don't use, I try to not use verbiage such as patient is compliant or um, against medical advice or those kind of things because it's so much, it puts a level of like the provider is higher than the patient and that they know more about their their needs and their benefits than the patient does. And certainly I do have patients also who come to me and they say, I don't have a clue. I just want you to tell me what to do. And in that case, I do, <laughs> I just, right. you know, yeah. I take over, but, but I think that a lot of, a lot of people are wanting to be more independent in their own health and make a decision. And, and I think that that's, I think that's actually a really, really great thing. And it's, it's helpful to us as long as we embrace it and we go with that because you have another person kind of backing you up and working with you in their care versus against you. Yeah. Um, I, again, that makes a, a lot of sense. What is one thing medical professionals can start doing today to improve the quality of healthcare? I think that the number one thing they can do today is I think the word today kind of struck me a little bit different than I expected it to. And then it kind of took my mind to a totally different place, if that's okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think just understanding, and many people are very understanding of this, but especially in healthcare today, there are so many unknowns and knowing and respecting and understanding where people are at and that everything is so new. And, And I am kind of referencing, you know, the pandemic and everything that we're in. And knowing that even though we have the science to back things up and that we may believe a certain thing should be done a certain way, and statistically we might be correct, forcing that upon somebody or doing something that is more abrasive is actually going to push people away from us and what our mission is, and and as opposed to, to pulling us together with patients. Yeah, so you're basically saying uh, there needs to be a respect for patient patient choice um, in um, in where things are, and even though, and I think this goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, sometimes patients may make decisions that um, are not exactly in line with what what you would prescribe or what you would suggest. But your respect is this is your life, and you're making the choices and I let you, I don't know if I let you be in charge, but I respect the fact that you're in charge of your own life and are making informed decisions. Is that right? Perfect. Lauren, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I appreciate you bringing a perspective that we have not heard yet. And you truly have a unique viewpoint Uh, for all my listeners. I appreciate you coming and I hope that you have had your mind expanded today. Lauren DeRoy, thank you very much for sharing your perspective on healthcare. Thanks for listening to Perspectives on Healthcare. Visit perspectivesonhealthcare.com to learn more about Rob Oliver or to subscribe so you never miss an episode. If this podcast was valuable, we'd appreciate a review on iTunes. Or if you tell a friend or coworker about the show, that would be helpful too. Join us again next time for more Perspectives on Healthcare.